Hello and welcome to the Tech Bytes audio cast. My name's Tim and I'm from the Oak Bytes Blogger Z and with me is Dr. Roy Shesterwitz from the Tech Rights website. It's Friday night and I'm gonna get sauce. I fought the troll and the troll lost. I fought the troll and the troll lost. He tried to boss me and was outbossed. I fought the troll and the troll lost. I fought the troll and the troll lost Underneath his creeper bridge Hoping goats will cross Quoting Ashcroft and Tom Ridge I fought Right, hello, we're back. This is episode 67 uh, with me, Tim, and Roy. And today we've got a plethora of topics to cover, so we'll dive straight into the news. I uh, hope you're uh, pleased to see us back, and uh, we'll start off with you, Roy. You need the first topic today. Well, one of the things I've just seen in, in the news today, uh, Nokia is pretty big in the news. Um, several things about it. One of the one one of the important things that I've just found out about. Apparently, they moved back to Linux, and now they actually have a phone plan for uh, a platform different to Migo, and that's for low-end phones. The other bit of news, I believe you covered in your blog yesterday, so maybe you can explain. What yeah, it was an article that I uh, dragged from the Independent, uh, that's the newspaper from the UK, and it was mentioning about Nokia's uh, ailing, ailing fortunes, for want of a better word or phrase. Um, Nokia shares crashed 15% yesterday, so that would have been Tuesday when I read that. Um, as the mobile phone company admitted its profits would be hit by competition, well, we all knew this was the way that the wind was blowing, I think... Um, at the time when the special arrangement or deal or agreement was made with Microsoft, I think there was many a tech pundit and commenter on the net that was saying that it was a bad idea. Now that has borne fruit and we see the results of what uh, Mr. Elop called the burning platform when he was referring to uh, Nokia themselves. Um, there's not really much else to say. Uh, I think it was a, an epic mistake. Um, it's very sad to see Nokia, who was once uh, a very big name, uh, very well respected within the industry now suffering uh, losses like it has, and I think uh, at the very least uh, Mr. Elop has quite a lot of uh, explaining to do in respect to his decisions um, of, of towards the company direction. Um, yeah, I think I might be leaving this year. Uh, I think about a year ago I read about plans to, uh, for him to basically come to the company do some kind of a uh, reinventing the, you know, reinventing the company, I suppose that means sinking the company, mm. and then he's supposed to come back to somewhere else. Uh, he's been moving around between companies for quite a while now. I think, uh, was it Mike from Media before he joined Microsoft? A few years before. I haven't yeah. really followed his history. Um, I mean, obviously, when he hit the scene on Nokia, that was when the mainstream interest uh, was around him. Uh, I mean, one observation I will make, and there's been many allegations that he was sent to Nokia um, for the specific purpose of, uh, of damaging uh, the reputation and the firm yeah. itself. Now, if that's not true, um, and obviously we're not going to be silly enough to make any of our of personal statements uh, as a statement of fact, but if that's not true, then to me the only other option, if he wasn't sent there intentionally, was that he's um, he's epically failed in his job to uh, revive Nokia. Um, so he's either failed catastrophically, or um, he's uh, the allegations were true in the first place. So yeah, well, one person I spoke today uh, suggested we actually try and call him e flop, not because <laughs> it's a flaw, but because he keeps flip flopping. Now apparently they want to move to Linux. Uh, and, and it's very important because, I mean, this is a very big phone provider. Another, you could call it phone provider because they actually sell the phones themselves with contracts coming from other companies. But in China, they used to have a very large market, also in Africa and all these developing markets where they have the low-end phones. You know, people don't buy iPhones in places like, I don't know, Ghana or Nigeria, I suppose. But in some of these places now, Android seems to be gaining a lot of tra- traction. I mean, if you look at the, if you look at the China, for example, I read a report today about uh, China having a market share, uh, about 70% Android, at least for new phones, which is pretty impressive. Um, so I suppose, in some sense, Nokia completely lost the market, which was important to them, and that makes you wonder why didn't Nokia choose Android and just try to distinguish itself by some very good hardware they had. Well, uh, Nokia's also had recent problems with the uh, Lu- Lumia 900 model. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, yep. Lumia, Lumia. Um, so it hasn't. It's not had a particularly good run of uh, of good luck, and uh, I don't see any future. Well, 
not any immediate future hope of recovery uh, Sinopia, uh, in, in, certainly in this year. Um, uh, there's not really anything else to say in relation to that, except I would sort of link it on to a, a quick few comments about uh, Windows Phone 7, which still is languishing, or seems to be languishing in the, uh, the bottom of the barrel in terms of uh, market share and uh, what the consumers want. But that doesn't seem to have stopped Microsoft from uh, pushing it as the uh, definitive buy that you must have. Now, I suppose we can't blame Microsoft for wanting to sell their own uh, phone. And uh, I think recently I saw there was quite a few promotions going on for the Windows Phone 7 where you can get freebies and things like that. And it's just yeah. their last ditch attempt. What concerns me more uh, in regards to the Windows Phone 7 is that when we look at the KIN, and that was a, a few years back now, top of my head, I can't remember the date, but we look back at the KIN, and whilst Microsoft is pushing these platforms all as well, and it's the best thing ever, and everybody's buying it, and there's so much interest, and customers are happy, and then all of a sudden there comes a point where Microsoft gives up the ghost and finally says, no, we're frogging the dead horse, throws its hands up in the air, and then the consumers left high and dry. Um, I don't suppose many of the KIN owners were very happy when they found out that after a very short period of time, the the phone was dropped and that was the end of that. Um, will the same happen to Windows Phone 7? I wouldn't like to ask that question. They but currently I... gain the numbers. So I'm, I'm not even sure how many they sell and activate. Uh, the numbers I saw is compared to almost a million uh, Android devices activated per day, something like 10,000 or so Windows. And I'm not sure if that num number is true, but uh, you were talking about the, the ratio here of about you know 1 to 100 between Linux or Linux-based platform and the Windows one. And the Linux Foundation did a very, very nice video recently. Uh, some people call it a propaganda video for the kernel, uh, where they actually do use the statistics from Android uh, to try not to only brag about the server and uh, high computing services uh, and the share that Linux has got in them, but they also use the statistics from the phones to try and sell Linux is everywhere and everyone's using it. Um, and that's the type of thing that Microsoft does not quite want to be out there because it it actually illustrates to people that there is a viable platform. It's free. Um, Microsoft itself has been trying to use patents to make it more expensive to use Android, but they haven't been very successful so far. And even the file system patents they were using in some in some cases against companies like Samsung and LG are now collapsing because the store world is actually participating in the, in the trial and showing some prior art which could derail some of those patents which were used to extort the Android platform and other platforms as well. Mm. Uh, I mean, it's, it, it's very interesting time, especially in the mobile phone world. And I've read quite a few allegations that the, the figures that are currently out for Windows Phone 7, even they are wrong. But yes. let's just let's just imagine, or just to say, for argument's sake, that the figures of Windows Phone 7 are correct, and it's a true representation of the consumer uh, choice out there. They're still diabolical compared to that of, of Android and dare we say it, Apple as well. Um, I mean, Microsoft really is flogging uh, a dead horse up a very, very steep hill here. And uh, the catch-up wise, I don't know, uh, well, I, can't, I can't see any glimmer of hope of recovery for that platform either. One interesting thing, and it's something that I've been trying to get an answer to, I'll, I'm trying to find out how Windows 8, and on its tablet uh, incarnation, it's going to be tying into the phones. Is Windows 8 going to be something which Microsoft is going to bring onto the phones as well to coincide with the tablet and have some sort of dual device uh, that uh, link up device between the two and have the same platform running on both? Or is Windows 8 going to stay specifically on the tablet and on the desktop form factor and Windows 7 will roll along in the background? Because if Microsoft has got intentions of putting it onto a phone and having a Windows 8 platform on the phone as well, and Windows Phone 7 isn't selling well, then I can quite easily see very, very shortly the same situation that we had with Kin, where Microsoft throws its hands up in the air and says, no, next time it'll be better, and we'll start again. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you've got any info. Well, I, I, I think the, the sharing and the modularity of the things inside Microsoft is really poor, uh, and that's because just the way they've always developed software. So I think the Kin had some elements in it which were shared with the Zoom, so once the king was axed, you kind of knew that they gave up on the idea of trying to turn the Zune into a phone. In some ways, you could even think of a king as something towards kind of a Zune phone. Mm -hmm. uh, and once one of them dies, they just realize there is no exit towards something different. There is no extension here. We cannot sell it as an MP3 player, and we cannot really sell it as a phone. Mm -hmm. So they basically dumped that, and I believe some parts of it also had the uh, uh, WPF and, and Silverlight and things like that. And of course that collapsed as well, because all of these interdependencies of the platform, they were hoping people would develop one platform in, in some kind of a very 
more abstract uh, SGML based uh, uh, programming environment or something which would then be very portable to like Xbox and Windows and they were